speak with uh, Danny Mackey. He's a Syrian commentator, and I think he's uh, with us now. Good afternoon uh, to you. Thanks for coming on. Um, Russia's defence ministry says the liberating or the liberation of the whole of Deir would be a, a major blow to ISIL in Syria. Uh, just explain why it is so important. Oh, this is a crucial blow to ISIL in Syria. Deir Resort is one of the most strategic areas in the country. It literally links the whole of the eastern section of the country and is what is one of the most or the largest remaining ISIS hub within the country, uh, Raqqa aside, of course. And the, the liberation of this area and the fact that it's been besieged since 2014 and for three long years there has been over 100,000 civilians actually trapped within the city facing what is constant ISIS attacks and for that to have been liberated by a joint Russian, Syrian and Iranian coalition uh, whose efforts against ISIL have been very effective of late is significant. First of all, it almost destroys ISIS's presence in this area. It means that ISIS no longer has any big cities to stay in. I mean, after Deir Azor, you've got the town of El Mayadeen and then you have El Bukamal, which is on the borders. After that, there's no real cities left in Syria for ISIS to be held out in. So it will naturally go back into a into, a, into a, an insurgency. There's no longer any big areas where ISIS controls in Syria. Deir Azor was a huge, significant victory, not just for for Syria, but also for Russia, because since its intervention in 2000, September 2015, the US, the West have all watched and, and wanted the intervention to be unsuccessful. They've wanted these efforts against ISIL to be undermined. But we're looking at this two years on from that, and Syria, with Russian support, has absolutely obliterated ISIS in many of these areas, from Palmyra to Sukhna to Deir Azor, and essentially we're facing now the, the end of ISIS in Syria, and this has been done without Western support and without any Western assistance. In fact, the West have actually attempted to hinder that assault. They've targeted Deir Azor and the Syrian military there on more than one occasion. So from a strategic perspective, this is one of the largest victories against ISIS, I'd probably say along with Mosul, uh, in the, in the previous previous year, for sure. Mm. Uh, we're hearing from the Russian Defence Ministry this afternoon who uh, believe now that the war against uh, ISIL in Syria will soon be over. Um, that's not overstepping the mark. I mean, a wholesale defeat of ISIL is on the cards pretty shortly. I mean, certainly it would not be premature to actually say that ISIS is almost uh, finished in Syria. With the retaking of Sukhna, of Deir Azor, of uh, Agerbat in eastern Hama, what we've seen is, is, is large swathes of land controlled by ISIS essentially taken back in blistering speed by the mili Syrian military and their allies. I mean, this is a remarkable feat. We're discussing an army which is taking back hundreds of kilometers of very rugged, difficult uh, terrain, often in deserts or in hills. And, and ISIS is very successful in, in, in using countermeasures, in using suicide bombers. And, and, and they've used 12 separate suicide bomb attacks over the last 48 hours. And for the Syrian military and its allies, and with Russian assistance and air power, to be able to retake such a huge area of land probably in around six months, it's one of the biggest feats of the, Syria, of the Syria conflict. I mean, the West must be looking at this in awe because this is a great day for the Syrian people, it's a great day for the Syrian army, and it's a great day for all of those who supported Russian intervention in September 2015 because they have been completely justified. I mean, if you, look at, if you go back to the history of this, how the West actually targeted Russia and said that the intervention had nothing to do with ISIL and that it sought to, sought to defeat those opposing Assad. Well, in 2017, we're looking at the dest total destruction and obliteration of ISIS within Syria. And a lot of that is down to the support given by the Russians. And the US are nowhere to be seen. I mean, the West are nowhere to be seen. There haven't been any statements, uh, in fact, supporting this remarkable achievement in is defeating that odd, Daesh. Danny, just, just to is, jump in there, do you do you find that odd that you, you, we don't hear sort of a collective congratulations about the defeat of, of, of ISIL in such an important city? 
No, I don't think it's odd because the West have, ha has, have had a very consistent policy in undermining any anti-ISIL efforts which are not led by them. And their policy in Syria has been clear to overthrow Assad. Even when ISIS came onto the scene, they still did not change from that policy. And since the US doesn't really have a policy in Syria at the moment, and all of its cards are essentially burnt out, there will be no need for them to actually congratulate the Russians or the Syrians on this tr terrific victory. And what we've seen in the previous this year is, is a coalition led by Russia and Syria which has made huge, huge feats against ISIS. It's, it's destroyed them in, in the most difficult areas in Syria and the US has only watched on. I mean, they haven't genuinely had a real desire or a, will, a real genuine willpower to fight ISIS because if they would have done that, they would have pulled all their cards with the Russians, they would have supported the Syrian army, they would have taken a more softer tone towards President Assad and said that we have a much bigger terror group to face in Syria, we have to fight this together. But this is, this is a very significant moment because it proves, and I think history will definitely remember this day, as an opportunity where Russia and Syria managed to defeat the most dangerous terrorist group in the world in their biggest bases without US help and in fact where the US was undermining these efforts. So from that perspective Russia has definitely shown itself to be a greater international power and a more effective power on the ground in Syria in a state where the US faces essentially no no, no real power on the ground and that's something which has been done through the efficiency and consistency of Russia's policy towards Syria and essentially certified by the fact that the Syrian military has gone through two, two, 250 kilometers of basically desert just to reach Deir Azor and link up with the forces which were previously besieged within that city. It's a remarkable feat and it should get definitely the credit it deserves. Uh, have you been able to see, Danny, any sort of reaction across uh, the country just by sort of normal people, the public in Syria, to this news that's just come out over the last hour or so? 100%. I mean, I've been in contact with, with, with friends of, of fellow journalists who, who are within Syria uh, from social media. If you look at the Facebook posts of even some of the soldiers, some of the journalists around the soldiers reporting from Deir Azor, it, it's a huge feat. I mean, everyone's talking about it. it it's, a, it's a day of national pride for Syria because uh, Syria's faced a very troublesome crisis. It's been in, in, in a gruelling war for seven years. And for Deir Azor, one of the toughest areas to be retaken after so many casualties, so many martyrs, after so, m so many losses, and after losing, losing lots of it to ISIS in that way, it really does show a moment of solidarity for most Syrians. Syrians are very happy on this day because it shows what, what can happen when people put their faith within the military, when they put their faith in the army and the faith within efforts to fight ISIS, this is the result. I mean, people w w will ultimately say that this, is, that this is a small victory, the West may undermine this victory, but take nothing away from what's happened. We've had an army going through the <coughs> desert for over, for over six months just to reach what is essentially a besieged area. There's 4,000 troops in Deir Azor. They've managed to last out for three consecutive years in the face of huge ISIS attacks. So when the Syrian people and the journalists, when the whole of the population see the remarkable feat which has been achieved, then okay. of course everyone's going to be happy. And there is a day of, a day of true celebration and congratulations from all Syrians in, in, in terms of uh, this remarkable victory for Deir Azor against ISIS. OK, Danny, look, really good to talk to you. We'll have to leave it there for now. That was Danny Mackey, though, uh, Syria commentator. Thank you.